Welcome back to our series on short story writing. Now, the first thing I would advise you to tell your child as you guide your child is to think of the story as a product. Okay. Don't think of it as a chore, as a task, as teacher's work, mm -hmm. as something I have to do. Right. But think of it as a, a product. product. Right. And if it's a product, then it is aimed at an audience. Okay. And mainly, a, a short story serves to entertain an audience, or right. readers, or listeners. Right. Um, they entertain. Sometimes there are other aims, as we said earlier, right. um, passing on certain values, yes. causing people to reflect, mm -hmm. but primarily, in, mo in many cases, to entertain. All right. And so, if it is meant to engage an audience, who would want to buy a boring or commonplace story if we're thinking of it as a product, metaphorically? Right. All right? And since it has no cover for you to look at to see if it's interesting, how can she get um, her story to be very interesting? Well, that's what we're coming to. So there are many ideas that I have here, many aspects that you can help your student through to make the story interesting. Okay. Now, before we get to that, okay. let us look at some elements of a good story oh. because this is the first thing in making the story yes. a real story right. in the first place. Right. So a story must have an interesting plot or storyline, okay. meaning that the student should plan an overall idea of some a story from start to finish, like a skeletal um, oh. frame of the story. So it'd and be good to use a graphic organizer to get wow, this done. Wow, you said you're a, a, a mathematician, but yes, I am. listening to you, you sound like you're a language expert, man. Well, I try. You try. <laughs> yes. Well, very good. I must congratulate you. Thank you. So the story must have an interesting plot. We don't okay. want commonplace stories about you brushing your teeth and walking and looking at floors. Right. You know, I always say to students, when you come in and say, girl, I have a story. Somebody doesn't want to hear that you went to bed and woke up. Oh, no. Not at all. Right. They are looking for something, something. out of mm. the ordinary. Right. So every story should have a conflict or a problem. Right. And when we say conflict or problem, some students think people always have to be fighting, fighting. or arguing or so. But a uh, conflict, as we, we will show in other aspects of whether in this, in part one here or in other segments of the presentation, a conflict can be can come in varied forms. Oh, okay. So once the character faces some kind of challenge or something that he or she has to overcome, whether mentally, socially, emotionally, physically, physically, spiritually, or otherwise, then it becomes a, a conflict. conflict. Okay. A captivating beginning. Okay. Readers or listeners are not going to continue um, paying attention or reading or listening to a story which starts out in a very boring, dull way. You know, miss, that is a very big problem. I don't know how to do that, and I don't think she knows how to do that either. You know, most times um, she'll begin by saying, once upon a time. Right, and, and we know one the, day, and there are many reasons for this. Okay, and one way you can help your child here your child must read, they must see how other readers express themselves. Right. You can talk with your child about the start of a movie that captivates interest. Okay. What happened in the start? Right. Was the character moving, running, pull, trying to get away from somebody, right. um, looking um, stressed, right. um, voicing something, and you can talk with your child about it, but also actual texts. So like, these are like mentor texts. Right, oh, so okay. in actual texts there are samples that show how good writers captivate their readers or listeners in the right. beginning. Okay. Of course, action and or deep thought. So one good way, as I said before, is to have action. A story should move. Okay. And so we use up the vocabulary that allows our stories to move. So a story should develop. A story should not remain in one scene or okay. looking at one thought or one idea. So the, it, a story should transition. The character should be believable. Right. So we don't want to have characters doing things that are in the cartoons because 
you know, we want our, our people to believe the story. Well, if it's a sci-fi, okay, you know, so if it is science fiction or something that allows the unbelievable, but if you if if the child is attempting to represent reality, mm -hmm. then the characters should be believable when right. they become yes. Sorry. Could you give me an example of that? All right. So, for example, mm -hmm. when you are nervous, when somebody is nervous, how do you know they are nervous? They are shaking. They are shaking. All right. Things may fall out of or their sweating. hand. They are sweating profusely. Right. right. Okay. So when when the student writes, we want to see those. We don't just want you to tell us that okay. the character was nervous. Oh. Okay. We okay. want you to show, show. us oh, okay. through words. Through words. Okay. So that the the reader or the listener can begin to deduce okay. to use also yes. their, their imagination, imagination right. or to create visual imagery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or images mm -hmm. as they read. Right, right. Suspense must be in a good story. Oh. So you don't tell us everything just then. The okay. man caught the lady. Okay. You know, how did he catch her? He heard the sound. You know, she heard him coming, but she tried to push in the drawer. But, you know, he was already at the door. Wow. Her heart was beating. Uh -huh. You know, so that's how suspense, that's how we engage and hold the attention of a reader. And, of course, what is more is having an interesting or surprising end to a story. Okay. Could you give me an example of an interesting start? So one example that I think we have further down was it. They were still coming. All my energy was spent. I was g out of breath, gasping. I could feel my heart beating out of my chest. Right. It thundered like an explosive sound too close for comfort. You know, I mean, that right. was just off the top All of my right. head. Right. It could be better. Great. Right? But uh, at the beginning, it should grab right. attention. It did grab my, grab my attention. It grabbed your yes, attention. It did. So stories should end with an interesting or surprising sentence or statement or idea. So sometimes you do things that the reader didn't expect. So I recall a story where people were standing below a building. A man was upstairs and they were negotiating with him not to drop something. Right. Right. That would have caused some great disaster. And, uh, you know, they were there negotiating, negotiating. And the writer led us to think that this man wasn't going to do it. And then it just said, and he dropped to them. And we held our hearts, yes, our chests. Definitely. It's like, you really dropped them. So that's an unexpected ending. And, right. Let's take a break. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 